So we're gonna use the string right here, uh, and it's gonna resemble the top of the concrete form, which is also gonna be the elevation of the concrete form. Elevation. We are going on the inside of our stakes all the way around. So we're gonna treat the inside of this stake like the inside of the form. We got the string pulled tight. Now we're gonna look down it. If anything, we want our concrete, our mo curb concrete, just a little bit higher than the ground. So if it's a little bit higher, that's fine. We don't want the ground higher and the concrete mo curb down in the ground because then it's just gonna silt over and your concrete's down here and then your grass becomes up top again. And all it is is just a no dig barrier for your dogs, but you still have to weed it right next to your fence again. Ooh. Find something flat, preferably a level, but this is just what I have right here and right now. See where your top of your ground is hitting on that string. So right here, we're about an inch and a quarter high. I would say that that's gonna be just fine. And on our next run, we do have to have an elevation change. So we'll actually be able to show you that. Since we already have this form set, this elevation it has to stay the same as far as this form. We wanna make sure that those two points match each other and they're coming off at the same elevation. If you're gonna do something like this, try not to put a stake right next to your hole so that you don't cave your hole in for your fence post. And then two, you, you get a nice solid foundation for your form stake. So I'm trying to hold the form tight to the stake so that way that string can move freely and I can see exactly what that string is doing to that form. Since we are in good ground, we want to go ahead and drive them all the way so that they're flush or just a little bit below the top of the form. So that way when we strip our forms, we can reuse these stakes. And we're just gonna set the top of that form to that string. If we were off just a little bit, what we could do is we could take our hammer and just kind of fit, push that stake over just a little bit, packing the dirt against the back side of that stake so that, that way it can't bounce back. We're gonna use a, st a wood stake to join two forms together. And all we're gonna do here when we match these two forms up is we're gonna put one screw in and match those two points together. We're gonna set one stake down here. As soon as we get that one stake set, then he'll put that other screw in. And then again, he's just gonna go back through and then put in a few filler stakes. If you could put a stake about every three feet, I think that's plenty. You know, that's how much flex you could get just on your concrete if you don't put in some filler stakes. Put those stakes in and then push on that board and see if you can get some flex in between that board and that string. And if you can't, I think you have adequate amount of stakes in that. If you were gonna go thicker on your mow curb, say you're going to five and a half, definitely shrink those spaces down to about two feet, maybe two and a half feet. The more concrete you have, the thicker it is, the more pressure you're gonna have pushing on those forms trying to bow it out. The straighter it is, the better it's gonna look. Talk about this thing. It's a six inch T25. Here's one that's just a two inch and here's the one with a six inch. You have to have this one so much closer to the dirt that you get a whole bunch of dirt up in your motor and stuff. And this one, you don't have to have nearly as close to the dirt. Make sure to watch out for sprinkler heads. So since there's one right there, we're not gonna go ahead and just drive a stake right there. But it's also right against the hole. We don't want that either. So earlier we were talking about what if there's an elevation change and there is an elevation and change in this one. It's more like right here. When you're gonna have an, eleva an elevation change, try to make it happen at a post as much as possible. So that way your concrete and your fence change elevations at the same point. And it doesn't have to be 
very far in the ground because all we're going to do is we're going to put a screw in that stake. We want our elevation to change. Let's call it center of this hole. And that just makes it so that now we can take this stake out. This is now holding our string down so we can go from this point up to our end point. And now we're gonna get set up for the inside form all the way around. Now that we're gonna run the inside form, we can drive a stake again right here and then work around that stake like we did right here. But we're gonna try something different. We're gonna go ahead and take some three inch screws and we'll put these two forms on the inside here. Now we're at 12 inches, so we're gonna need two stakes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use that level to transfer from form to form. But before we screw it off, what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that we're 12 inches that way. We just assembled a 90 degree on the two forms. We're gonna put a screw here, so that, that way we can attach our string. So what we did here is we took a stake and we cut the point off of it and we cut it to 12 inches long because we don't want to sit there and measure every single gap and it's easier to put something in there and then hammer a stake to it. I can hold this all at the same time and push that direction and then I'm going to use that level to set my elevation. I'm using the same stake right here to do my elevation change. Before any concrete is poured, all disturbed soil has to come out. You can, it's not a good idea to pour concrete on top of anything that has been disturbed because then things can start sinking, falling, and it's just not a good thing. I know we've already double checked these like 10 times, but we gotta go again. All that loose dirt has to come out of that hole because what's gonna happen? That post is gonna fall. All that loose soil that you disturbed with your auger that you were too lazy to take out, it's gonna naturally compact over time, causing that post to fall. We don't like flaws. Flaws are bad. It is a good idea just to leave a few odd piles on site so you don't have to bring dirt back in when you strip these forms out. You are gonna create that cavity from that form. You're gonna to wanna to use your excess dirt to fill that back in to make everything look just, just awesome, A-OK. -okay. The next big step is concrete and concrete comes tomorrow. So big day, big day.